Welcome to Bam and Blind. I'm Beverly, and today's topic is really one that I've been wanting to talk about, and it might seem very um, uh, black and white to many viewers. It depends on what your perspective is, but the topic is, can blind people own cars? And I want to get into this because I have heard, well, of course not. Blind people can't own cars because they can't operate them. And to own a car, you have to be able to operate it. And then you have the other side of that coin where, of course, blind people can own cars. They can own planes. They can own boats. They can own houses. So we'll get into this right now because I've done a little bit of research and it really isn't as simple an answer as you might think it is. I would hope that it would be because I'm one of those blind people and I can tell you that I do own a car. So I don't operate the car, but I do own a car and I've owned many cars over, you know, my adult lifetime. So let's get into it. You can own anything if you've got enough money. So let's start out right there. If I had my eye on a $50,000 car and I had $50,000 in cash and I went to a dealership, I would give them that money and they would happily take that money and they would give me the keys to the car and then I would turn to somebody and say, okay, drive me home. You know, I, that's, that's basically, you know, I, I'd have to... Uh, I don't even think I would have to have any proof of insurance because I'm I'm taking the car away. It's my car, and uh, unless you live in a state where you know to get it out on the road, you have to have liability coverage, and that is the case in in my state. So I'm not sure even then that I would kind of be able to drive it away without proving that I had some liability coverage, which means covering the other person in case I hit them. And, but it doesn't matter to that dealership. I just gave them $50,000 in cash, and so they couldn't care less if I went and, you know, plowed it into a brick wall and hopefully nobody got hurt, but it would be my car and it's not financed by anybody or owned by anybody else. Now, if I took that same uh, scenario and I said, well, I'm blind and I wanna go purchase a vehicle for $50,000, but I only have 20,000. So I hand them over the 20,000 and I say, but I'm gonna finance the rest of it. Then they would be dealing with my finance company and the finance company then would, would say to me, okay, I need proof of insurance before I finance this car for you. Before I hand over $30,000 for this vehicle, I need to know that it's insured because I'm you know, giving you uh, basically $30,000 for something and I've got to make sure that that investment is protected. So that's what insurance is for. So I would then have to say, uh, let me go get my insurance papers. And then I go quickly to my insurance company and I say, okay, I'm buying a car, I'm financing $30,000 of it and I need proof of insurance before they will approve my financing. And then they particularly would say, well, who is going to be the primary driver of this vehicle? Is it you? And I would say, no, I'm not licensed to drive. And then their little ding ding bells would go off and say, okay, you're not licensed to drive, but you want insurance on this car. So who is the primary driver? Um, in most cases, if you list someone in your house as the primary driver, uh, it could be a spouse, it could be a child, an adult child that's legally got a license, it could be a parent uh, that legally has a license or a licensed driver, um, then they could take that as a the insured person on your, uh, on your insuring paperwork that you would then take to the finance company to then borrow the $30,000 that you need to purchase that car. So basically, someone would need a driver's license most likely to, to get the insurance, then to get the financing, then to get the car. So that would be the first hurdle that you would have to overcome. Now, in my case, I'll give you an example. In my case, my husband and I co-own the car. So we both own equally own the car as an, as an asset to both of us, and we're legally married. So 
In that case, we didn't have any difficulty getting the uh, comprehensive uh, the uh, comprehensive insurance and liability coverage for the car to then show to the finance company that we have insurance and my husband is listed as the primary driver of the car. Now, sometimes the insurance company might ask for me to be specifically excluded, even though I am the owner of the car, but to be excluded as an insured person uh, for any comprehensive collision coverage uh, but certainly I might, I would have to have liability coverage because that is required in my state. You know, my state requires that you must have liability coverage to get out on the road, uh, to drive a car on the road. So that's, that's a legal thing. Uh, just like you have to have a driver's license to be sitting behind the wheel operating the car. So, so in that case, yes, a blind person can purchase a vehicle. Uh, a blind person can get insurance even though the insurance company could balk, let's say the scenario is, and I've seen scenarios like this because I've got many friends that are completely blind or certainly don't have the vision to drive, um, and uh, so they're, they're low vision, where you're just a single person. Uh, maybe you're widowed or maybe you are just a single person and you don't live in a place that has public transit, like where I live, there, there's very little public transit. There are no trains, there are, there's no bus service, there's no regular bus service. You can get rural transit sometimes, but that's, you know, by appointment only and only, you know, as needed, it's real specific. So it's not the same as even an Uber or certainly not the same as owning your own vehicle. So let's say you lived in a place like I live where there's no public transportation and you work and let's say, uh, now I had a job previously where I worked five different counties. So, you know, I, uh, my, my employer actually hired a driver, but you know, the driver didn't necessarily want to use their car to go to these five different counties. And in that case, and let's say I'm, I'm just a single blind person working out there earning a good living. Uh, you know, I would certainly have the right to own a vehicle and to have that vehicle operate for the benefit of me. So in that case, I would have to list the person that would drive me to and from work and the person that would drive me, you know, in my work since transportation was part of my work. Um, I would list them as the primary insured person, and I would probably have no difficulty getting the insurance for that, as long as I paid the premiums, and I probably would have no difficulty getting the financing for that, as long as my credit score was okay and everything. So just based on blindness alone, no, you can purchase a car, you can get your car uh, insured, and you can get your car financed, and now registering your car. So basically the registration for me was the easiest part because all I had to do is show up with the, the proof of purchase or the bill of sale and a, a photo ID. It did not have to be a driver's license. As a matter of fact, mine is a non-driver's star ID with one of the specially you know, vetted new uh, IDs. But you can get, you use a, a passport because that's also been vetted. Um, it's a, it's a uh, photographic uh, identification card. Uh, you can use a federal ID. So if you were uh, active duty military or federal employee or dependent of one of those, you're gonna have, have one of those federally vetted photo IDs. So any of those can be used when you go to register the car. And what they need is proof of insurance and proof that you own the car and you can get it registered. So, in to, to answer this in a, in a very simplistic way, yes, blind people can own cars. And yes, blind people can finance cars. And uh, blind people can get insurance on cars. And yes, blind people can register their cars. And 
let me add to the last little piece of this, which I'm gonna continue this, this series until I get through a lot of information that just has to do with this topic. It's way too long to, to put into one video, but yes, even legally blind people can drive cars. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave you with that thought. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, if you disagree that, you know, something that I have said doesn't ring true and you want some more discussion on it, please let me know because I don't mind at all researching and adding into the discussion on this in the comments section. I've done a lot of research on this and um, I'm not a legal expert at all. I'm not an insurance expert, even though even though my sister is. She's a, she is a... a definitely an insurance expert um but this is this is what i have found this is what i have lived so i'm speaking from my personal experience only and i would love to hear any comments or thoughts especially if you're intrigued by the idea that yes even legally blind people can perhaps drive a car so until i Talk to you next time, everyone. Have a really, really safe and healthy and happy day and upcoming week. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.